We are going to check in with the old ETF dream team to see if that dream turned into, well, a nightmare. We're also going to cobble together a brand new dream team. Hold on to your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. In a video back in March of 2022, we put together a so-called dream team of ETFs that hopefully were going to make us proud with some great returns. Of course, right after we did that, the market confirmed its fall into bear status, and some of those dreams quickly did actually begin to turn into nightmares. We did choose 10 stocks for that team, and let's find out how they did. The criteria for a pass or fail will be, well, if their total return beat the market. In that time frame, the TSX had a negative 8.04% return and the S&P 500 had a negative 1.43% return. We did have three U.S. stocks so they will be evaluated by the S&P number and of course the Canadian stocks will use the TSX number. In position 10 on that list we had MLPA. They were a U.S. ETF and they have a total return of 17.99% so we are definitely off to a very good start and this is a very decisive pass. Next up we had ZPH with a total return of 2.86% and well it's our second pass, so we're two for two so far. That's not too shabby. At eight, we had Bank, B-A-N-K, and their total return came in at negative 13.25%. So they do get our first fail. Next, we have WSRD with a total return of negative 2.44%, which was, well, it was a pass, so we're three for four. H-E-R-O is the next E-E-T-F, and they came in at a negative 7.36% return for, well, another pass. They, of course, totally eked that one out. They didn't pass by much. At number five, we had Edge, E-D-G-E, -E, and they came in at negative 10.92% for, well, uh, yeah, for a fail. Next, we have QYLD, our second U.S. stock, and they had a total return of negative 0.12%, so that gives them a pass. So that puts us at five passes and two fails so far. The next two were, well, they were the crypto yield ETFs, and with the collapse of crypto, they are absolutely both fails. So BTCY.B, they had a total return of negative 31.04%, and ETHY had a total return of negative 43.21%. Holy banana. Bread. When they fail, they fail big time. With one left, we have five passes to four fails, and the final one is a US ETF, and it was FHH, and they finished with a negative 3.50% total return for a fail. Not a big fail, but it's still a fail nonetheless. Yikes, half of that dream team did not do as well as we had hoped. Of course, that is proof that you should absolutely always do your due diligence before blindly following someone on YouTube. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you have your own dream team of ETFs. Your participation is, of course, well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content. And a big thank you for that click. This time around, we are not doing 10 ETFs, but we are looking at five that should have a better track record than last time. These ETFs definitely excite me more than last year's dream team, so we should be in for a win if we come back and revisit these ones again next year. I have a feeling we probably will. Anyway, without any further ado, let's do this. Kicking off this list, we have Hamilton Global Financials ETF with a ticker of HFG. This ETF invests in the best blue chip financial sector assets around the world with a global diversification that does include 15 countries. Looking at their statistics, they have net assets of $43.76 million. Their beta comes in at 0.99, so they're pretty much as volatile as the market average. Their NAV comes in at $20.22, and they do have a P.E. ratio of $12.50. Their return on equity, that comes in at 15.12%. Their management fee comes in at 0.75%. Let's take a look at their return. So for dividend-wise, they have a dividend yield of 4.14% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.07 cents per share. When we look at their returns, for their three-year return, they had a return on investment of 23.89%. Factor in those dividends, we get 46.63%, so that's not too bad. On the one-year, their one-year ROI comes in at 1.19%. Adding in the dividends, we get a total return of 11.54%. Coming in for 2023, their return on investment came in at 5.93% and adding in the dividends, we do get a total return of 8.47%. So that's not too bad to start off the list. Coming in at number four, we have the Horizons Enhanced Income U.S. Equity ETF with a ticker of USCC. This ETF invests in
in the large cap U.S. equities and writes covered calls on a portion of their investment to, of course, well, enhance their overall return. They have net assets of $162.10 million, and they have a pretty stable beta of 0.61. Their NAV comes in at $12.92, and they've got a price-to-earnings ratio of 19.80. Their return on equity is a nice-looking 28.97%. Their management fee, that comes in at 0.39%. When we look at their dividend yield, that comes in at 8.637%. That is paid out monthly in the amount of 12 cents USD per share. Their overall returns for their three-year return on investment, that comes in at 9.75%. Add in the dividends, we get 21.84%. On their one year, that comes in at negative 1.48%. Adding in the dividends, we get 9.04%. And looking at this year, 2023, their return on investment comes in at 5.60% add in those dividends, we get 11.50%. Taking in our third spot, we have BMO US put right hedge to CAD ETF with a ticker of ZPH. They write out of the money put options on a underlying portfolio of US large cap companies. They have also hedged this fund to Canadian dollars to mitigate any exchange impacts. Their net assets come in at 23.78 million. They have a beta of 0.66 and their NAV comes in at $14.82. Their PE ratio comes in at 20.50 and they have an even healthier return on equity at 39.73%. Their management fee that comes in at 0.65%. Switching over to dividends, their yield comes in at 8.108%. That is paid out monthly in the form of 10 cents per share. Switching over to the return on investment, their three year ROI, they did have a rough patch at the beginning of that, so they have a negative 22.60%. Adding in the dividends, of course, so it takes it pretty close to even with a total return of negative 3.85%. When we switch over to their one-year return on investment, that comes in at 4.65% and a total return of 13.10%. For 2023, they have a return on investment of 10.07% and their total return comes in at 15.26%. In our almost top spot at number two, we have the Horizon NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF with a ticker of QQCC. This ETF is designed to provide exposure to some of the largest and most liquid stocks in the NASDAQ. It also employs covered calls to enhance the returns on that portfolio. Net asset wise, they come in at 143.81 million. Their beta slightly more volatile than the market average at 1.15 and their NAV comes in at $10.97. They have a price to earnings ratio of 28 and their return on equity comes in at 33.05%. Their management fee, that comes in at 0.65%. When we look at their dividends, their dividend yield comes in at 11.851%. That is paid out monthly in the amount of 10.7 cents per share. When we look at their return on investment, their three-year ROI, that comes in at 125.26% for a total return of 148.43%. That one-year ROI, that comes in at 109.75%. Total return after the dividends of 132.64%. When we look at uh, 2023, their 2023 return on investment comes in at 19.63% with a total return of 26.70%. This is an ETF I did buy heavily into at the beginning of the year, and I'm very happy with the performance thus far. When you look at some of the higher numbers on the two and the one year, they are a little bit deceiving because this was an ETF that was completely retooled in June of 2022. In our top spot at number one, we have CI Tech Giants covered call ETF with a ticker of TXF. This ETF provides exposure to the U.S. technology sector and then uses covered calls to take the income generation to the next level. They have net assets of $576.64 million, a pretty stable beta at $1.02, and their NAV comes in at $17.51. Their price-to-earnings ratio, that comes in at 27.90, and they have a return on equity of 27.75%. Their management fee comes in at 0.65%. Their dividend yield, that comes in at 8.738% and it is paid out quarterly in the amount of 33.4 cents per share. When we look at their return on investment on the three year, that comes in at negative 3.85%. Add in those dividends though and it takes it all the way up to 27.47%. On the one year, their return on investment came in at 
32%, add in the dividends, total return of 15.63%. And for 2023, they have an ROI of 32.08% when we add in the dividends, their total return comes in at a nice looking 37.55%. These are some pretty good ETFs with a track record of success. If we move into a bull market, there is no doubt that this team will perform and they may very well make last year's dream team a faint memory as old dreams tend to fade away. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on TC Energy or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner and I will see you in the next video.